These are Celesti figs. They're real easy to grow and they're pretty winter hardy in 7B. They quit dying to the ground after they were three years old. So look at the size of the trunks on them. Pretty good size for 7B. They were completely girdled by voles, a vegetarian rodent that uh, in the wintertime gets a pretty good appetite. And if you cover these trees up with a lot of sticks like I did, they live in there and make a nest and start eating the sweet bark on the fig. The fig already has some kind of a latex that's supposed to stop them from being eaten by animals, but doesn't seem to work on some of them, the voles anyway. But even after being completely girdled, surprisingly enough, these two trees survived. But they've got some Breva figs on them, which are the first crop from overwintered wood. And they're just starting to get their main crop figs, which right here you'll see a few main crop figs. Now the figs will turn blue when they're ripe and they taste really good and they're very good for you. And figs in this country, um, above zone 9, um, in, in lower numbers than zone 9 in colder climates, can't have any male figs. So without capra figs, the male fig, we don't get any pollination. So all the figs we grow, called common figs, they're all female and they seem to be able to make fruit without making seeds that are fertile. There are no fig wasps north of zone 9 because we, uh, we can't overwinter them. They freeze to death and they live inside the male fig and they fly out of the male fig and pollinate the female. But by carrying the, the pollen from the male into the female, of course, through a hole in the female fig. The figs that we have will never have fig wasps inside of them and don't even need pollination. So that's one fruit that doesn't need honeybees or anything. But in the, uh, in the in places like Turkey, they buy male figs and they hang them up in little bags um, from the branches of fig trees just like these so that they can get fertile seeds. Because sometimes a fig, when it's pollinated, will change and become much larger and much tastier and have nice little crunchy seeds in it when it's pollinated. So that's why they buy the, the uh, male figs and hang them in their trees with their common figs, even though it's not necessary. We can't even buy them here that I know of. I've looked to see if I could buy some male figs in bags so I can hang them up in my tree. So what I would like to do is get some fertile seeds so I can get figs started growing from seeds. But, you know, being that I can't even buy the, the fruit to be sent up here in bags to hang for a season for the males, um, I'm certainly not going to be able to get the capra fig, the male fig plant. And um, I'm sure it wouldn't be hardy this far north either. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. But if you buy Smyrna figs from California, they have the fig wasp there. Someone brought it in. And um, it's much warmer in Southern California in the valley. And uh, Smyrna figs will have the fig wasp. And the Kadota fig that they're growing, um, they say for the fig Newton, it's already been pollinated too. So these, like I said, these common figs can be pollinated and they make them better and bigger, more productive, but they will grow without pollination. So this is supposed to be Celesti fig, but I'm not really sure. I'm not a fig expert. And it seems like we really need some fig experts out there that can really identify figs because there's even one on the forums, Fig for Fun, Figs for Fun and um, OurFigs.com, those forums, they're constantly arguing over, well, you know, I spent 30 bucks on this tree. What is it? And they'll say, yeah, that's a, a Violette de Bordeaux, and they'll go, no, it's not. I've got that same type of leaf, and that's not a Violette de Bordeaux. That's something different. So, who knows what they all are. It's too bad. I'd sure like to see some fig police in this matter. Bye-bye.